This interview is with Professor Steve Beaumont at the University of Glasgow, and the questions I'm asking Professor Beaumont are about the strategic view that Glasgow took when developing its repository and linking it with other systems, where they've got to at the moment, and how he feels the objectives have been realised, and any advice he has to offer other people thinking of the same thing. So, Professor Beaumont, where I'd really like to begin is to ask you a little bit about the history of particularly the Enrich project, which has been quite well publicised, mm -hmm. but also anything else that you've done in this area that you feel has helped the university exploit its uh, scientific outputs, its scholarly outputs and deliverables. Mm -hmm. So uh, the university has been involved with repository development uh, for quite a substantial number of years before, certainly before I ever came on the scene. The major catalyst for us in terms of strategic engagement with the project was the drive towards open access. Um, and we felt that this was a big opportunity for the university to promote its research outputs in ways that it has not done before. I think um, in the past perhaps the, the only thing the university really did in terms of promoting its research outputs was to produce a uh, a, a book listing all its uh, research publications uh, and that had gone into abeyance some 10 or even longer years ago. So here was an opportunity for us to put Glasgow back onto the map in, 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 in terms of its publication output and we saw the open access agenda as a way of supporting that, that uh, rekindling of promoting the university. So when uh, uh, the uh, open access agenda opened up and we established, it, or I established rather, that our library was heavily involved in the technology development uh, with, with partners elsewhere in the UK, um, we worked towards a policy of requiring our staff to deposit their outputs in the Enlightened repository, and that we did in, I think, 2007. Can I ask who you had in mind when you say talk about opening up and promoting the university? Did you have particular target groups in mind that you wanted to reach? No, we felt that well, we, we, we wanted to um, expose the university's research to the wider public, not just to academic community, okay. but also as part of the university strategy, we're trying to be much more of a, an international institution uh, or be more overtly in, international as an institution. Uh, and we felt that uh, putting our publications online as much as possible, certainly making the bibliographic information uh, online as much as we possibly could, would enable us to reach the wider academic audience, the industrial audience, uh, and also the wider public. It would basically make the university much more visible and more accessible. We know how difficult it is to access research publications, it's an involved process, you either need a library or you need special access to uh, publish, publishers' databases, not everybody has that, um, and when it comes to larger scale publications it's even more expensive and more difficult. So this was a means for us to reduce cost, put thing, everything online and just open the university up. And you said that in 2007 you started to encourage or require academics to use the uh, repository. Did you find that that was something that took a while to get them to understand and accept it? Has it taken some time to, to get their general uh, agreement to collaborate in that? No, I think that was surprisingly straightforward. Um, we consulted with uh, academic leaders in the university um, through our researcher, research policy and strategy committee, we consulted the wider audience. But there was a process of getting this approved by Senate. Um, and I felt that it, the, the university was surprising, the, and the academic community in particular, because they're the folk that really have got to buy into this, were, were understanding of what we were trying to do. And I always feel, find that if there are external... Uh, catalysts like the open access agenda for doing this, then it helps to bring the academic community on board. You mentioned that you've got senior members of the academic community involved. What about other colleagues in the senior management team at the university? Did they buy into this fairly quickly, into the idea of actually making the repository a real focus for 
exposing the university to the yes, that wasn't particularly difficult at all. Again, uh, as I said, the university had a strategy of opening up, uh, perhaps reopening would be mm. a better way of putting it, because obviously Glasgow has been around for a very long time, and we've had. Uh, and a, a global agenda for many, many years. Um, but latterly, that might have fallen into abeyance a little bit, and here was an opportunity for us to, to rekindle those sorts of open uh, openness within the university. So I think it fitted strategically quite well with many other messages that the university was trying to, uh, to promote internally and externally. And the, you mentioned that you already had a repository in place. Here. Yes. So, what about the cost side of it? Was it very expensive then to actually drive it out further to start adding content to it? Did you have to do a lot to the technical infrastructure to make it a more wide? No, we've done that quite informally. Um, we've we've not set aside substantial budget for doing this. Um, we have, as I said, we 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 had in the past always. A, uh, kept up a, a, a database of publications. This was a more modern way of doing that, as it were. Most of the cost has therefore been contributions in kind, as it were, from academic staff, from the library, and from the um, from from administrative staff within the university who have been involved in the process of uploading information or providing information to the library that they can then upload. So the costs to some extent have been hidden within uh, budgets within the institution. It's not really cost us a great deal of money in terms of a massive investment. I know other universities have gone for commercial software and commercial packages. We have not done that because we were part of uh, an open uh, uh, access, an open software project in the first place. Uh, the costs of doing this in terms of uh, uh, software investments and so forth have been very small. Um, I guess behind all of this there are, you can point to costs that we haven't analysed in terms of providing servers and energy and so on and so forth together with labour costs but we have never tried to make that visible. But something the university is well capable of absorbing Absolutely. a massive amount of extra overhead. And, and tremendous support from the library who I think also saw this as uh, a step into the future of, of library systems and the sort of support that libraries would give to the research community within the university, not just books, but also ways of promoting their outputs. Is it, has it been established for long enough that you can begin to see some tangible benefits yet from this? Because 2007, it's not that long ago for, and then you, for some, an initiative like this to start to take root, but have you begun to feel some of the well, I think the statistical down the statistical information on downloads speaks for itself. I mean, the fact that so many downloads, I don't actually have the statistics with me. Perhaps I should have sorted that out before we had this interview, and you might want to edit them in at some point. But uh, um, uh, there's been substantial numbers of downloads. You know, we can point to one or two particular examples of where. Um, you know, we have, have particularly heavy traffic against certain outputs. But also the search statistics are quite interesting. We can use the hits on the database as particularly from things like Google Scholar um, and, and inquiries which have been directed through Google Scholar as a way of analysing the interest that the outside world has got in certain areas of Glasgow's research. So it also gives you not just the uh, the broadcast mechanism, but it's giving you a feedback mechanism Absolutely. as well about sure. what people are interested in. And then, of course, my own point of view, from a research management point of view, uh, I can start, A, to look at, at top-level statistics in terms of how much the university is publishing, where we're publishing, um, what sort of journals we are we're, we're targeting with our uh, research papers, um, and, of course, the database includes other sorts of output, so books and monographs, and we're trying to diversify into other media as well, uh, though that's more into the future. Um, but it enables me to get a handle on where we're publishing, what we are publishing, who is publishing what. It's an extremely valuable research management tool, as well as a means of promoting the university externally. And 
We've talked about the benefits. Have there been particular issues that have come up that you either weren't expecting or perhaps turned out to be more of a challenge than you'd really thought they would be during this? I think probably the internal mechanics of getting information uploaded into the system. Putting in place a process which would reliably ensure that the, uh, somebody's new, new publication actually found its way to the library. The other issue that we encountered in the early stages was the fact that some departments in the university had already established their own databases and therefore um, there was a certain amount of ownership transfer that had to take place. And we tried to encourage people to, to, to think that what we were really doing was replicating what they had been doing as best practice uh, for the university as a whole. And that seemed to work quite well. And the central repository then, has, has it now superseded these departmental repositories? Everything is now amalgamated into the We do. There, some uh, departments or schools now, because we've just uh, restructured the university, some schools use their bibliographic information for other purposes and at the moment those other purposes can't be provided from central services so we tend to parallel if you like mirror the information between the central university repository and the school repositories so that the schools can continue to use the information for their other purposes using their own local systems. But gradually the university is investing in cross-institutional versions of those management tools and so eventually we expect those local needs to disappear. Do you foresee linking to other systems beyond the repository system itself because now in institutions you've already mentioned publications, yep. databases, but there are also research management yes. systems for ongoing projects. Yes. And of course everybody's beginning to think about preparing for the REF sure. in sure. Uh, however many years yeah. it is. Well, just responding to that particular point, um, the repository has been enormously helpful in terms of our mini REF exercise which was completed at the end of the last academic year. So that was a full internal uh, assessment of our publication output uh, together with a, a check on our research income and early stage look at what our impacts might be. And we have broadened the repository to capture information on esteem factors as well as impact case studies, examples of the sort of thing we might use as impacts. So that's, that's, that's the REF side of things and we will continue to update the repository so that it captures what our academic colleagues feel they are likely to submit to the, to the REF itself. So that we've got a, a moving snapshot of our progression towards the REF proper. We have started to link the university's website to the repository so that personal web pages are now driven by repository information. So for some schools, those that have been early adopters of this system, if you now go to individuals' personal web pages through the university's homepage, you will find that the data has been driven from the university repository. And again, we expect that to, to broaden out to cross the institution as more resources and more, more schools come on stream. We have linked um, the repository to the research system. So the research system in Glasgow captures information on research grant applications, research contracts. Um, and so we can now provide for our funders a link from the grants that they have funded through to the outputs that have been created. So that's been a, another valuable promotional tool, but also something that we expect to be able to feed back to research councils in due course. And likewise, the impact information we're capturing in the repository will also enable us to provide better reports back to research councils on research impacts. Have you had feedback from funders yet about their use of it? Have they begun to make use of the links between um, the, the, their own documentation on your site and... No early days as yet. Um, one of the things that we have been trying to do is to work with the research councils so that the way in which we are developing our own repository enables those sort of uploads of information to be 
facilitated. Um, and the way in which impacts, for example, are categorised, we've been trying to standardise that across the research funders and our own systems. That's been quite difficult. Um, and I don't think we, we've really managed to successfully mirror or come up with a common language, a common template, if you like, for the re recording of, of research impacts. Uh, so still early days in that aspect of the development of the, the database. Glasgow is obviously a very large and complicated institution, very wide range of subjects, um, a large number of staff researchers, a lot of students. Are there particular things that you feel that you've learned that, are, that are, would help other people in similar large institutions execute a project like this, where it is in perhaps the most complex environment it could be somehow, like Glasgow? I think we've succeeded because of the enthusiasm of the key staff who saw this as a way forward for the library, for example, for colleagues in research and enterprise who wanted to establish a more complete, richer database of research information. And as I said earlier, I think bringing our, properly communicating our intentions to the academic community and linking it to national and international uh, policies and, and, and developments in, in open access um, and in making research information available. I think be coordinating that successfully and communicating those messages and having the right people associated with the project was, was absolutely key to doing this effectively and relatively, relatively efficiently. You took a strong interest in this project yourself from mm -hmm. the start, and I'm wondering if you have any advice for repository managers who are seeking to engage somebody at your level in their own institution. What sort of things should they be saying to somebody to get your level of engagement to catch your attention? I think being able to communicate the benefit to the institution. That's absolutely crucial. So you need to explain me to me as, as potential repository manager why the University of Glasgow or the University of X should, 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 how it would benefit from something like this. And I think in the answers to some of your earlier questions, I've shown how I saw the benefits to the university emerging from uh, the investment we made in this, albeit a relatively small investment financially, but no doubt quite significant in terms of time. So they should really be seeking to understand the university strategy and its policies, and then also talking about the communication, the way this is going to be communicated is one of the things that's come out a lot of what you said is there seems to be quite a long and careful period of communication with everybody involved about it, rather than just being launched into yes. the academic environment. Yes, absolutely. Now, a few years into the project, how do you feel about the real, the, the, these benefits being realised? Are you beginning to get what you want out of it? Is it going to be a project you're going to say, yes, we're definitely going to continue this because it's doing what we need it to do. Yes, there's no question in my mind that having better information available to me as a research manager and available to the outside world in terms of other researchers and the wider community that I spoke about, spoke about earlier, um, that's, that's been achieved and, and we will want to continue to support the, the repository for, all, for, those, for those reasons. I mean, who knows how technology will develop in future and who else might provide the sorts of services that we currently provide ourselves through supporting the, the repository. I, I don't know the answer to that. We're aware of developments. But we will want to retain something like this system uh, going forward. There's no doubt about that. In terms of achieving objectives, um, I and my colleagues now feel we have got the systems in place that mean that the repository is properly populated and we can rely on the contents uh, of it for research management purposes, for example. It doesn't really matter a great deal if it provides a complete picture of the university's research to the outside world, but it certainly matters if we're trying to make use of the content of the repository for um, development purposes within the institution, for strategic planning purposes within the institution, for performance measurement within the institution. It matters a great deal if it's complete or not. Uh, and we feel that over the years we've managed to get to a point where 
we now have a, a complete repository and the systems for ensuring that remains up to date in place so that we can rely on it for those purposes. I'd also like to ask about the future for the repository. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously you've come a long way with the bibliographic work, but we know there's a now a very large agenda about making research data available as well, as well as the formal outputs then a university like this must accumulate an enormous amount of very valuable research data. And I wonder if you could talk a bit about that and your other plans for the future. Yes, at the moment, um, except in areas like clinical trials where we have some statutory obligations to retain research data, it's, this is a very new area for the university in terms of institutional-wide policies. So we've left it very much to individual academics and departments to curate their own research information and research data, but quite obviously recent events have meant that we're going to have to change our approach to all of this. And we certainly see the institutional repository as being one of the components that we will use to help to curate and store research data and make it available to uh, the outside world, to the, to, to the wider public. I think this is going to be a much more challenging agenda than the uh, collation and collection of bibliographic data and research outputs. Um, quite clearly, the academic community is somewhat more guarded about its research data than it is about its research outputs, which after all are there to communicate with the outside world. Um, so we're at the start of this process, but we very much see the repository as being one of the means and one of the components that we will use to deliver on this agenda. Research data, of course, presents as well te some technical challenges as well as the organisational and culture challenges, doesn't it? So um, are you thinking at all at the moment about the technical infrastructure you might need to support that? Too early, I think, to, to comment on that, but I think one of the uh, one one part of our consideration is not just what we will do about data, but what will we, what will we do about the algorithms of processing that data. Professor Bamble, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.